it's time to review the new Dragon Drive project. Hi, here we go. What is up? Uh, welcome back. A, today we're doing something a little bit different. Um, as you can see, it doesn't really look like we're set up to do any wrenching on anything. The, uh, the wagon's tucked away over there. The, uh, the daily's put away in the shop. The door's closed. No tools are out. And that's because I'm not doing any wrenching today. And actually, I didn't plan on doing any video today because I already filmed this video and went to do the editing on it because it's got to post tomorrow morning. And the audio was jacked up like not there at all so uh, i'm going to try and do it again and remember what i talked about before but i probably won't because that was a week ago um the other ridiculous part right now is according to my my shop digital thermostat right over there on the wall that's i don't know if that's going to come through on there but it says 35 degrees it's 35 degrees inside my shop granted my shop's not heated obviously um, but it's like in the 20s outside right now. It's freaking cold. Um, here in Oklahoma, we're getting hammered with what they call an Arctic blast. And uh, 35 is not really an Arctic blast, but this morning when I got up and went to work, it was negative two. And uh, we're expecting some more of that. So I don't know that I'll be doing any wrenching this weekend because it's just gonna be too damn cold. Anyway, what this video is really about is that car yep it's that time it's time to get started on this project uh which is going to be the new dragon drive project um i guess without further ado uh let's get the car cover pulled off there yeah okay so for any of you that have been watching my channel for a while um you probably recall that there used to be a blue four-door sitting right here and I still have the blue four-door. It got moved into the other garage to bring this one in. Um, and you've probably picked up on that I'm kind of a Chevy 2 guy. I kind of like them since I had three of them. And now, if you had not figured out from the profile of this car yet, I have four of them. All four are technically different body styles. This one, is a 1963. Hey, come on, car cover, work with me. Uh, stuck on the mirror. It's a 1963 two door hardtop. This car has served, if you hadn't guessed, this car has served for the last many years as a bracket car. Um, the uh, I got it from an old timer that's had it for, well, at least 20 years, he was from what he was telling me. And uh, in the last 20 years, it hasn't been on the road. It has been purely a bracket race car. I it used it for eighth mile racing. And if you hadn't noticed, the, uh, the dial end's still on there. And it had, he had a dial end of 730. And on an eighth, eighth mile, a 730, if you run that in the calculators, that, you know, the uh, eighth mile, the quarter mile conversion type calculators that estimate what the difference would be, um, that puts this car somewhere in the low 11s on a quarter mile. It's uh, currently set up with a four to nine inch outback. Uh, the wheel wells haven't been cut. It has stock inner tubs. So it's a fairly small slick on there. It, the drivetrain is a 406 small block, uh, a 400, 30 over. It, uh, well, well, we'll come back around to that. And uh, it's back with a turbo 350 transmission and a 430 gear on a spool, which for a bracket race car, that's a pretty dang good combination Although for a drag and drive, we're going to have to change it up a little bit. The, the 430 gear out back with a one-to-one -one final drive out, the trans, out of the transmission, um, that would mean our highway cruising speed would be like 45 miles an hour. 
and uh, that's really just not going to cut it for a drag and drive. We, we need to get a little bit more uh, mile per hour out of it. I'll have to run the numbers, but we'll probably end up somewhere around a 373 gear on a limited slip instead of a spool like what's in there. It's got a full spool right now. Uh, let me ditch my hood. It's messing with me. Um, but overall, it's a pretty, it's a, it's a really solid car. It's a great place to start. And uh, let, me, let me grab a camera. Yeah, here we go. Um, if you watched any of my really early videos, you know that I was planning on making this car my drag and drive. Um, it's a two-door post, a 62 two-door post car. Um, the body's in excellent shape, which has been an ongoing battle on whether or not I wanted to cut into it at all to do race car stuff. Um, I don't know if you can see it at all, but I do have a slick tucked under the back of it that's a decent size. Um, that probably would have been sufficient for what I needed, so I could have got away without cutting the fenders. But as you may have seen in some of the early videos on the channel and in you know the background of many of the videos on the channel, uh, it's got a straight axle set up under the front of it for a gasser. And to do a gasser, one of the things that I've really been battling with this car that I think is just a necessity for a gasser is you have to cut the, uh, the rear wheel well. You, basically, you got to radius this and you got to come up to about, you know, two inches below this body line is where I think it looks best um, so that you can have the back sit right and have the right slick and have it uh, with just, you know, about an inch to two inches of poke depending on wheel and tire combination. Um, so on the red car, that's been a battle is whether or not I'm, I'm committed to making that cut. And then there's also adding a cage. Um, cause if you're going to run, I think it's below an 1150 on the quarter mile. Don't quote me on that. You'd have to check the NHRI stuff, but it's somewhere in there. Um, you have to have at minimum a roll bar set up, <coughs> excuse me. And, uh, if you're going to run down, uh, below a 10-0, you've got to do an 850 cert cage, which means you got to, you got to do cage work. Um, cage work takes away from the streetability. Sometimes you have to do some cutting. Um, you got to weld in, you got to give up the back seat. Sometimes there's ways to get around that. But all of those things were things that on the 62, I just wasn't sure. I just, I have been battling with because it's such a solid car. And it's like, man, everything about this car is really nice. It'd make a it could be an outstanding streetcar. So I kind of put that project off to the side while I figured out exactly what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. And then I came across the deal on this car and I was like, that's perfect. I don't have to cut up my 62. I can take it back to being a street machine or something, you know, something that doesn't need a cage, um, doesn't need the fenders, the, uh, the quarters radius out. I don't know. I don't know what the plan for the 62 is yet. Um, but what it does mean is that this car is going to take its place as a gasser. Being that it was already used as a race car, we'll go ahead and take a look inside. Uh, the, the interior is already, uh, as you can see, there's no passenger seat currently. Well, that'll be getting addressed because in a drag and drive, you uh, generally speaking, you want to have somebody go with you because of uh, well, the whole the whole experience. One, you don't want to do it alone. That would just wouldn't be any fun. And two, the uh, if something breaks, you want someone that can be there to help fix it. Because the idea with the drag and drive is to make it through the entire event. Um, attrition is a huge factor in a drag and drive. And the more you can keep things together and make it through the event, the the better the overall deal is. Um, and you're allowed to have one person, a co-pilot, basically as part of your team for the event and all the tools and parts and well if you want to know more about a drag and drive um, just look up a lot of the drag and drives the uh, the real real popular one is hot rod drag week um, but there's quite a few other ones sick week and uh, uh, rocky mountain drag week and pro and quite a few others that are that are going now um, but uh, so yeah look look those up if you want to know more about it, how, what a drag and drive is but in short, your car not only has to be a, a car that you're going to drag race, but you have to drive it from track to track to track to track throughout a week's long worth of events. 
Um, I think most of the drag and drives are five drag strips in either five or six days, something along those lines for most of the events. Um, but, and then also you'll notice in here, uh, continuing on with the car, I'll, drag and drives, if you want to know more, just look up drag and drives. But that's the plan for this car. So continuing with that is this car already has a, a roll bar set up in it. And from the research that I've done, this roll bar setup is good to a 10-0. Uh, so that means that we've got, you know, our, our safety is in check. It's got a, a fire extinguisher that's mounted right back there. So that meets that requirement. Basically everything we need to go racing is already here because this car is served as a race car. Now it's just a matter of uh, making it a street car. But before we actually make it a street car, we're actually gonna go and we're gonna pull, I'm gonna pull the gasser front end that I started mocking up on the 62 and we're gonna take and we're gonna put it on the 63, um, which is great because it's interchangeable between the two cars. So we'll literally unbolt it from there and bolt it up to here. It's that simple. Minus the fact that you gotta pull the whole drivetrain, the whole front clip and everything like that, all that nonsense off. But uh, what also makes this car a great candidate for that um, it does need some door bushing or hinges rebuilt. This door sags a little bit, but you know, it's such pretty dang good. Um, there's no rot in this car. But uh, anyway, what I was saying is what makes this car, I'm gonna put you down for a second. You're gonna ride on the hood of the wagon. Um, a good candidate for the front end swap is in the process of making this a race car, the, the previous owner, didn't really didn't do a whole lot with the front end on this car um, it does have a a mini subframe kit put in it by CPP which is um, basically it, it swaps out the the really crappy design lower arm and strut rod the the worst part of the Chevy 2 front suspension the CPP mini subframe kit replaces that with a better setup that's closer to an A-arm design. Um, it's still a little bit off, but other than that, it's, you know, it's better than stock, but it's nothing fancy. The rest of it is a completely stock front clip, which is uh, heavy for one, and for two, they handle like crap. Um, they're bulky, they have tight engine bay clearance, there's just, there's really nothing great about the factory front clip on a Chevy 2. I mean, with the exception of the skin, the outside of the car looks fantastic, but the design in the front end is just not great. So it makes this, since it's got almost everything we need from the firewall back and, you know, between the cage and the, the rear end setup, we need to change gearing and go to a limited slip, but the, the nine inch that's back there, um, we just you know radius the rear wheel wells and we can get a uh, a slick in there that will be appropriate for being a gasser and then from the firewall forward we're going to pull the factory front clip off same thing we did over there ditch the factory front clip put that gasser front end on this car and just like that we're going to have a gasser with you know a good bit of work that we got to do to make it a good street car so uh, let me tell you more about the drivetrain. The up under the hood, the mill that we're working with is a a GM factory 400 block that's been bored 30 over, and it's extremely well hidden by this air dam, which I don't know if I'll end up keeping that or not. And I would pull it, but I'd have to go get some wrenches, and my hands are already starting. My fingers are already starting to go numb. Um, but you, it under that, it's just a an RPM dual plane intake. It's not even an air gap. So a basic intake, it's got a, an Holley uh, 850 CFM four barrel mechanical secondary. It's got an HEI uh, distributor in it. Uh, the heads have been changed. They're not GM heads. The, they are in um, a World Products 202 head uh, Sportsman 2s which is a good head. I believe it's a 200 cc head with a 64 cc chamber. 
Um, it's not a bad head paired with this motor. It's a pretty decent combination. Uh, the one thing I do know about it is the steam holes didn't get drilled. And on 400, 400 cubic inch small block Chevys, uh, if you're going to street drive them, I've, I've read conflicting information about the need for the steam holes, but there's no, nothing bad can happen from having the steam holes. So I'm going to have to either add steam holes or we may even swap the heads and go to an aluminum head that's got a little bit better um, flow characteristics for better performance overall. Um, that'll help our motor run a little bit cooler. The aluminum heads will also need steam holes if they don't already have them. Um, and most of them don't, but that's no big deal to get the steam holes put in. Uh, we will have to work with the accessory drive. Right now it's got a... Uh, a purely a racing style setup in it. It's got a little electric motor that runs a little cog belt for turning the water pump. Um, I don't know how old that system is, that motor setup. And when you're running, you know, a drag strip pass and going back to the pits and shutting it down, that's more than sufficient for getting the job done. Um, since we're planning on hitting the road with this car for drag and drive type use, uh, I don't know if I'll go back to a mechanical setup or if I'll look at a more modern electric water pump. There are some some damn good electric water pumps these days and a lot of guys run them on drag and drive cars. And they drive the thousand plus miles with an electric water pump without having issues. Um, water pump, the, the technology in that and making them last and reliable has gotten worlds better over the last two decades. And I imagine that that setup's probably just from looking at it, I'm going to say it's a pretty old setup, um, which for the application was perfectly fine. The radiator's a little undersized for putting it on the road, especially if we're going to do uh, with the drag and drives, because most of them are during hot climates. Uh, because, well, nobody really goes racing when it's 30 degrees outside. It's just not a thing. So we'll, probably, we'll have to go to a larger radiator. Uh, no big deal. We already got our catch cans. Fuel lines are set up well for this application. Uh, so that's all good stuff. The, the, in short, we have a drivetrain that's a good solid starter drivetrain for a drag and drive car. I'm not sure in its current configuration, um, even with changing the gearing out, that there's any chance we'll get into the low 10s. Uh, but my target goal for the car is to be somewhere down around the 10.0. Uh, I don't, I don't know that I've got the budget to chase, uh, getting down into healthy into the nines or ain't definitely nowhere near the eights, the high eights, um, which if we drop under a 10 0, we also got to go from our current cage setup to an 850 cert cage. Um, and that's a whole nother level that maybe someday we'll get to, but for now we're shooting for the 10 0, uh, hitting a 999 once or twice here and there when conditions are just perfect would be absolutely fantastic um, but basically we're going to be targeting getting to that 10 0 mark starting off with pretty much what we have um, and then working up from there figuring out what performance modifications need to be had to get there but this is it this is my new drag and drive car um, or will be my new drag and drive car i know it says for sale right there i just haven't cleaned it up um, and I got lots of stickers and an old, you know, old school special on there. All of that's probably going to go away. We're going to we're going to make over the look of the car to, uh, you know, to start its new life off as a gasser. Um, one other thing that's also all been changed out on here is this car has uh, Lexane windows all on both sides and in the rear glass. Um, I did get all the original side glass for this car. Um, it still has glass in the wing window, but the, the door window and the quarter window for both driver and passenger side, I have the original glass and it's still in good shape. So uh, I don't know, I may put the original glass back in. The windows will close better with glass in there, and, but it is heavier. Um, since it is going to be a race car, maybe we won't. Maybe I won't put it back in. I don't know. Don't know what's going to happen with that. There's there's still some unknowns to go on there. But uh, all in all, I'm looking forward. Oh, and another reason we got to address the front end. Um, 
it still has uh, the, the four lug stuff with the little baby drum brakes. And uh, well, that's just not gonna cut it. We're, we're gonna need, I want, I want disc brakes for one, and I'd like a little bit bigger brakes too, because this thing's gonna be, well, if we're gonna drive it, we're, we're gonna drive it, you know what I mean? Um, and just to give some, some size scale, scale to this, I, I think this is a 13 inch, yeah, there it is. I'm gonna, ro you're rotating, rotating right there. It's probably upside down for you. This is a 175-80-13 front tire on it. So that is a dinky little slot. Um, small enough that what they'll probably end up becoming is I'll probably have pop those tires off there and junk them out and just hang the wheels on the wall for wall art because I don't know of anybody um, that does anything with 13s anymore. They're, unless it's like a utility trailer or something. Anyway, um, I know I talked about a bunch of other stuff in the video footage that I lost due to lack of audio, and I don't remember what it was. Uh, I probably mentioned something about that car and its transmission problems, and that's still a work in progress. If you haven't watched the latest video on that car, um, 700R4 decided to stop shifting. You know, it just, you know, it was there, it was shifting, it was fine, and then no more shifting, just that quick. Um, wasn't like it burnt, felt like didn't feel like it burned up clutches or any of that nonsense. It just we drove and we had all the gears like normal and we stopped at the parts store. The wife was with me, that's why I'm saying we um, actually, well, the camera was with me too. You'll see that video. Um, well, in the last video, that video is up, but uh, yeah, so we, we got to the parts store got out i went in the parts store because i needed a pinion seal for this because it started uh to leak a little bit you have to watch if you watch that video you'll find out more about that but anyway left the parts store and only had first gear perfectly fine getting to the parts store only first gear when i left so that was a, a fun ordeal um but so that's still being chased uh i i did do some filming and work on that last weekend at the same time that I actually did the filming on this originally, and somehow the filming for this video got ruined, but the filming for that video is perfectly fine. But that video is not done yet. And uh, in a short that I put up, you know, I think it was Sunday last weekend, the I said I was gonna reveal this. So I have to reveal it, right? So here I am, it's a Friday night. This video is gonna post in less than 12 hours. It's 35 degrees in the shop. I'm freezing my butt off, but we're making it happen anyway. Um, I think, I guess, the uh, the only thing left to do is to uh, to fire it up so that you can hear what it sounds like. You wanna hear what it sounds like, right? I don't know, it's 35 degrees out in the shop. It's gonna be cold blooded. No, yeah, there's no choke on it. Um, Race car, remember race car? Uh, I guess we can see if it'll fire up. I, I'm not sure. So uh, let me uh, let me put the camera down. I gotta connect the battery and then uh, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Cause everybody, you, I know you want to hear what it sounds like, right? I like listening to it. And I I would open the shop, but it's too damn cold out there, so. We're just gonna fire it up with the door closed. We're not gonna run it for long. But you gotta believe me that it's healthy. And, but are you gonna believe me if I don't start it? Oh, my, my hands don't even wanna work. Oh, get there, okay. Oof. All right, all right, battery's connected. Oh, hopefully the battery has charged. It also doesn't have an alternator because of race car. Um, and I don't know how much charge is in the battery. So that also might delay this. We'll find out right now.
way decent. I expected it to be a little more stubborn. It did crank a little soft, so I suspect like the battery might be starting to get a little low. Might have to get a charger on it. But yeah, there it is. That's the new drag and drive car. Uh, we'll, work's going to get started on that. Probably as soon as this Arctic blast weather goes away. Because it's just too damn cold. I mean, 35 degrees. My hand is... I don't know. I can't really feel my fingers already. And I haven't even touched the wrench. So there you have it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Support the channel. Uh, the more support the channel gets, the more fun I have doing this sort of stuff. Nah, I'm gonna do it anyway, but uh, it's just fun doing it for the video channel. And, well, let me know what you think. Is, is this a better choice for bringing my gasser bill? As much as I want to say that if you said no and you keep building this one as a gasser, I probably wouldn't do it. It's gonna be that one. But, I'll, uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll talk to you on the next one.